we're back with Opinion Journal Live, and Bill McGurn is uh, staying on to talk about the contempt vote in the House against Eric Holder. Pretty remarkable event. Yeah, it's extraordinary in history. I think no cabinet member has ever been held in contempt before, so this is a, this is a historic moment. Yeah. W what do you make of it, Bill? What is going on here? Well, you know, I think most people weren't paying attention to Fast and Furious. I'd say I wasn't, was simmering in the back. I wasn't sort of on my radar screen. But the Attorney General's refusal to hand over materials is just, you know, with every day you wonder, what are they hiding? Yeah, it uh, is a little bit odd. It, it's, it's very odd also to pay this price. Now look, a lot of, uh, probably this will go nowhere. They, they've also passed a civil contempt measure that yeah. they can pursue in courts. That probably won't be resolved before the election. There's a possibility. It may force the White House to present a log of documents and so forth and be more detailed. But look, I think that's how the, the founders wanted it. People uh, pursue things. We don't always get clear answers. What we get is to do X, you have to incur Y, you know, Y disadvantage and, and invoking p executive privilege is a, is a big deal for the president as well. The last time this happened, there was a contempt vote against, uh, I believe it was Harriet Myers, Myers. and John Bolton oh, right. in the Bush administration. Right. <clears throat> the Democrats took that into court and it was resolved. Uh, right. They did a deal on it before uh, right. it actually came to a... Right, right. And that, that, that's the way, I mean, you would have hoped that there would have been a deal before before this vote. It didn't happen. Uh, I mean, the worry now is among some of the Republicans, Eric Holder may step down before any of this gets resolved. But I think it's, it's just another it's just another little thing with the administration. Why, why would they go to this extraordinary step of invoking executive privilege when they hadn't invoked it beforehand? And I think just if you're, you're kind of just tuning in, people are saying, what must they be hiding on it? It's just a logical question. I'm not so question. sure they're hiding anything. I think they're looking for the precedent, Bill, because I have always been of the mind that in the second term, Barack Obama is going to use a tremendous amount of executive authority, mm. say the Environmental Protection Agency, to accomplish his goals. And Congress will push back, but I suspect they're pushing back at Congress. It's a, it's a kind of battle for power inside Washington yeah. in the way you exercise that yeah, power. Yeah, I, I would think that that would be a more persuasive argument if they invoked executive privilege before and so forth. Um, to me, it's more of an Occam's razor sort of thing, the simplest explanation. If they were telling the truth about what they did, they're the heroes of this program. They, they got wind of it and so forth. It, it doesn't seem, I mean, they've retracted several statements before. I mean, that's the other thing thing and the, the other thing that's gone unmentioned. They've made various statements that have turned out to not be true. So the level of trust is, is way down. I, I think it's logical to assume that there's something they don't want people to see. Well, the difficulty is that it was referred to the U.S. Attorney in the District of Columbia right. who has appointed Barack Obama. Right. He's probably not going to take it anywhere. Meanwhile, the White House is arguing that because the President has exercised executive privilege, they're under no obligation to refer it to the Justice Department. Right, they're not. I mean, I mean that's part of our accountability. And I think the, the ultimate accountability is political accountability. People have to weigh and see whether you trust them and whether they do it. He will have to defend executive privilege in court. You can't just say executive privilege over a whole glob of documents. You have to say what they are and so forth. So we will get some more of a resolution to it. One more quick question, Bill. This probably won't go anywhere, but it does raise the question of whether Eric Holder's tenure as Attorney General itself should be made an issue in the presidential campaign. Yeah. Not merely this, but other... Right. I, I, in fact, I think not only not merely this, this is only one little um, part. He's been... I think to, to most observers, a very politicized attorney general. If you look at the president's statements early on, I mean, he made clear the attorney general is not the president's personal attorney. Yep. He's supposed to represent the people. And I think one of the reasons Eric Holder's in this fix is a, a lot of bad will that he's engendered by his decisions to do things and also to not do things. All right. Thanks a lot, Bill.